Hello and welcome once again to the Trailer Fitters Toolbox. Uh, if this is the first time you've joined us, we do tutorials on Land Rover repairs, especially the 200 and 300 TDI engines. Okay, this is about replacing the cylinder head gasket. So, we've got a socket, we've also got an engine which uh, is on the deck. We also have one in the workshop and we've also got an engine which is on the engine stand. I'm going to be demonstrating this tutorial with the thing on the engine stand. It's bolted up here without a flywheel or a uh, flywheel housing. This has a safe working load of 550 kilograms. Now you'll probably notice that it's um, a lot easier to do this um, on a stand than it is in a vehicle. However, for recording purposes, we're going to do it on a stand. This stand is highly mobile probably easier than what you would if you had your Defender, Discovery or Range Rover. I can move this about and um, do what I want with it. So you can see how easy it is to move. I can also turn it through um, 360 degrees, so if I want to work on the sump, turn it upside down. In this case, I'm lifting it up by myself and it is a little bit heavy. Locking the pin in and we're ready to go. Well, first of all, this is a 300 TDI engine. Um, the head gasket sequence is relevant to the 200 TDI engine. And if you notice, the rocker cover is removed and there's certain components are missing. Um, you're big enough now to be able to get on and do this. If you can't even get the rocker cover off, don't bother changing the head gasket. This is the sequence, according to the manual, for the cylinder head bolts. And this is the removal sequence. The difference is between tightening up and removal is that you're going to be removing the head starting from the extreme corners working inwards. So you can see how these bolts are telling you in the direction where you need to go. This is what you need to do first of all and it's a series of crosses. I'm using a 300 TDI manual from Brooklyn Books and it's clearly outlined the tightening sequences. Okay bolt lengths and the instructions. You also have the undoing sequence. What I would advise to do first of all is just to slightly wind the bolts off in the first sequence. Don't pay any attention to the sequence I'm doing, I'm just showing you how far to go. And to reach some of the bolts you might need an extension. I'm using an awfully long breaker bar, all right? And if you see the action of what I'm doing here is I'm actually pulling towards me at chest level, all right? This will be the best way to do it. Um, don't do it at face level, just in case the socket slips. Once you've got it loose enough, you can then wind off the bolts quickly with either a ratchet or like I'm doing here with just an extension. You wanna wind them off and then don't let them drop back into the bolt holes, okay? There are three types of different bolt actually on this engine um, retaining the cylinder head. I'll explain these in a little while. Just be careful with these, don't damage the threads. All right. And according to the manual, you can use these bolts up to five times. If you're not sure, then dispose of the bolts you remove and replace them with new ones. A bolt set comprises of 18 bolts and they're available from the paddock website. And the part number is here. Please don't do this if you can help it. Okay, so on this side of the engine, you can recognize it's where the injectors and glow plugs are. This is the shortest bolt. Okay, so you have the short M12, um, the M12 by 140, and then you have the M10 by 117 millimeter, which is here. Now they should stay in order and go back in the right places. You can't or shouldn't be able to get these wrong, by the way. The sizes are up here on the screen and in the manual they will also tell you where the positions are. All right, If you've got a good memory then it's alright. So look after your bolts, make sure the threads are alright, you don't want them too oily and you don't want them damaged at all otherwise this could hinder them when you screw these back in. Okay. Any doubts, chuck them away and get new ones. Get yourself in a good position to be able to lift the head off. All right good grip and then it should lift off all right if you're in the vehicle it might be a bit awkward 
However, you want to put it onto a surface that is not going to be face down, okay? Something like that. Okay, I do appreciate it is probably harder in a vehicle to do. Uh, reaching in from the front or possibly the side. If not, get somebody to help you, but it is possible. All right, get it out and then just put it somewhere where it's not face down. Okay, head gaskets. A couple of different types and this one is the composite gasket like this all right this composite gasket is um, by far the most popular gasket that's fitted it does leave a bit more mess on the uh, cylinder face and the block however the links for the product is in the description below if you'd like to look and you need one of these just to keep this tutorial short, I'm not going to go through checking the cylinder head condition, the warpage or how to clean the gasket off. There's already tutorials on my YouTube channel for this, along with a playlist where this video is situated. The second type of material you can get on a gasket is a tin multi-layered gasket, which is an upgrade from Land Rover. The determining factor or the thickness of the gasket is shown by these three holes and you should be able to see it before you remove the head in this position. There is a range of gaskets you can get, ranging from zero hole to three hole. And it is vital that you know the difference and why they are at different thicknesses. I'll explain this during the tutorial. The three hole thickness gasket seems to be the most common on these engines. It's supposed to be the thickest, however you can get one which has no identification holes, available from Paddock. Links for the head gasket part numbers are listed below this video. The multi-layered gasket, or the tin gasket, was an upgrade from the composite gasket. This is available in aftermarket or genuine parts. In my hand I have a genuine gasket which I bought from Land Rover for uh, quite a considerable price. It's uh, three hole. And here's the aftermarket one. And there appears to be no significant difference between the quality of the two. There's something called rise above block where the piston is actually above the cylinder block here you can see it very clearly this will determine what thickness gasket you actually have now in the manual it will show you what there is and you use a uh, DTI to measure the rise of the piston okay this is usually done when you've changed your pistons or your crank or you've done something to the bottom end the whole idea behind this is actually measuring the maximum rise on the pistons. Now you measure at two points at the pistons and you measure all four and find out which is the highest point. Now with this one, I'm not going to teach you how to do this, it's in the manual. Just for shortness, if you haven't changed the pistons, you're only doing the head, then it doesn't matter. These are the tolerances that the workshop manual give you for the one hole, two hole, three hole and zero hole gaskets and uh, be worth paying attention to these tolerances okay so if you actually like measuring then you could use a DTI to see how far your pistons rising all right otherwise just keep to the same hold gasket working how it goes on it doesn't go that way think about it I use the all hole as a reference so I'm still looking for it right okay so it's gonna go on that way okay where my fingers are there's an oil hole there um, you have your three markers here and you'll also have some dowel pegs one and two okay they're actually in the cylinder head at the moment the cylinder head bolts here this is actually on the 200 TDI block all right I check them and I make sure the threads are all right in the block I make sure the threads are all right on these bolts these have been used twice already by students who have been using this 300 TDI and they've got to be in good condition so when you screw them in they don't snag anywhere all right so if you're pedantic like me you'll screw them all the way in just to make sure there's no oil or dirt in there before you actually go ahead and put the head gasket and the head on all right the disadvantage I have here is that the block is on the side you won't get this I'm only doing this for video purposes I have the cylinder head here and there's my oil hole I have the dowel pegs in the head which you should have them in the block this is only to help me locate so I can fit the head on in the way the engine is positioned 
Okay, that's it for part one. Join us in part two when we uh, use the right sequences to bolt down the cylinder head.